folks, my name is Matthew Peterson, a trainer at Pragmatic Works. As you saw in that intro video, our company does everything from on-demand learning, private trainings, hackathons, virtual mentoring. Uh, we have this wonderful YouTube channel here. If this is your first time, make sure you subscribe. Uh, if you wanna keep up to date on all cool new learning experiences free for you. Uh, and in this video where you're currently at, you're in my Power Platform series. I'm on episode seven. So what I've done in this series so far is I've done quite a bit with Power Apps, a little bit with Power BI, and now moving to Power Automate. And I wanna show how we can use Power Automate integrated in with Power Apps to send out an email notification about some details about a record that has been created. There are so many different ways to do Power Automate. I have a lot of videos on tap for the rest of this year, but in this one, I'm gonna show you how to send out an email. I'm also gonna show you at the end how we can send out an email directly from Power Ops and not even use Power Automate. So without any further ado, let's take a look at what we've got going on here. So this is the application that I've built. Uh, feel free to go back and watch in this series of how we got to this point. But here's what we wanna do next. What I wanna do is I want to take one of these records and I would like to send out some details about this record to whether maybe it's to a manager, to it's the person who created the record, and we're gonna see how we can make this dynamic in just a few moments. So how do we do this? Well, the beautiful thing is Power Automate is already integrated into the Design Studio Power Apps. All I need is a button or an icon for my users to click on to kick off the Power Automate. Every Power Automate needs a trigger, and our trigger is gonna be manually doing it right here from the application. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go into my template cell that has my records in it, and I'm simply just gonna put in a random icon. And the reason I'm starting off with the random icon to start here with is to show you a little trick. So here's an icon, but as you notice when I went to icons, there are so many, and it can be hard to find the one that you want. So what I do is I put the random icon in to start with, I'll pop open my properties panel, and then over here you can see, when I hit the icon drop down, there are so many more to look at in a much easier fashion. And I can even search for the icon name. So I know mine's called mail. So I just click on mail and boom, there we go. We now have our mail icon in. So now the next thing I need to do is I need to set some action up. When my users click this, what do I want to happen? Well, I want to power automate to get kicked off. So how I execute that is I come up to my action ribbon and then I'm going to click on power automate. Now, once I go to Power Automate, any flows I've used in the past I can choose, or I come down and hit Create New Flow. So I'm gonna create a new flow which takes me into Power Automate. Now, one of the things to know, once you do that, make sure you're in the same environment that your application is in as well, which mine is. Now, I could do a, a, a one, <coughs> I could start completely from scratch, or I can take advantage of some templates here within Power Automate. So I'm just gonna use this Power Apps button template. Once I click on it, the first thing I'm going to do is give this a new name. Uh, instead of Power Apps button, I'm going to call it Send Park Details Email. Now, this is my trigger. Power Apps is going to be the trigger. What do I want to happen after my user clicks the button? Well, I need to get the details about that record. I need to get the row. So I'm going to hit New Step here. Now, when doing new steps within Power Automate, Typically what I'll do is if I don't have the, the actions memorized, I'll start with the data source I'm tapping into. So in this case, I'm tapping into SQL. So I'm gonna choose SQL, and then I'm gonna choose SQL Server. Now I will see all of my actions that are associated with SQL Server. And the one that I want for today is called Get Row. I wanna get one row of data. So I'm gonna click Get Row, and then I'm just gonna put in the things that are needed here. So what I need here is I need the name of my server, which is Pragmatic Works. I need the database name. I need the table name, which in this case is coming from my inspection table. And I need the row ID. How do I get the row ID? Because there's so many rows within SQL, right? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, hey, Power Apps, tell Power Automate the exact row that we are referencing here. So when I click on row ID, we're going to choose at this moment in time, say, hey, we're just going to ask in Power Apps what the row is that we're trying to reference here. So I'm going to choose ask in Power Apps. Now, technically, that action is done, but let me give you some best practices here. So one of the things that I'll do is with any action, I'll hit the ellipses and I will rename it. And when I rename it, I keep the original name because I like to use this as a reference if I'm building other flows that are similar to it. 
But what I'll do is I'll put a dash and then I'll put down what am I really doing in this flow? So I am getting park inspection record from app, something like that. If you want to put even more to it, you're definitely able to do that by hitting the ellipses and you can add a note. And then here you can add, you know, whatever you want to here to make it more self-explanatory. So I'm just gonna put whatever you want. So now that I have that executed, what do I need to do next? Well, the next thing I need to do is I want to use this information and put it into an email. Uh, I could do this as a Teams notification as well. You'll learn that once you get into Power Automate, there are so many different things you can do. But my idea is to send an email. So I'm going to click on a new step. And this is going to be send email. So I'm going to go send an email. And I want to use my Office 365 Outlook. So I'm going to do send an email v2. Now once here, who do I want this to go to? Well, if I click on two, I can put my name in. Or if we have the email addresses located within our uh, within a table, we can choose add dynamic content. And notice here, I'm starting to see the dynamic content. These are the values that were returned from our original get row action. So my inspector is technically a uh, email address that I am logging in. But for today's purposes, I'm going to hard code it in here because I'm just going to pick a, a random um, record to send this email out to. But you can see if you've got the email address in the data, you can put it in right here. But I'm going to hard code this to come to me. So mpeterson at pragmaticworks.com. Now, what do I want the subject to be? Something like here are, here are your park inspection details something like that. If I can type today, there we go. Now for the body, here's what we can start to do. I can put dear and then maybe I want to bring back the inspector. So I'm going to send this to the inspector. So dear inspector, comma, take a look at your inspection. And I'll go to a new line. What do I want to return about the inspection? Well, maybe I want to bring back the comments that was uh, recorded for it. So I'm going to hard code in comments, colon, and then I'm just going to select in my dynamic content from my git row action, I want to bring the comments in. Pretty neat, pretty easy. What else do I want to bring in for today's uh, video? Maybe I'll bring in uh, the date of the record creation. So over here, sometimes you'll notice when you're in dynamic content, it won't show you all of the, it won't show you all of your values that you have available. So when that's the case, you can search for that, that column value. So I think in ours it is called the inspection date. And now you're seeing here, I'm getting more of those columns that we have in the table. So I'm going to bring in the inspection date and then I'll bring in one more thing. Um, let me say I'll bring in the rating. So I'll bring in the rating as well. But as you can see, you can bring in whatever you want to here. Now, essentially I brought everything in that I want here. I have the date, the comments, the rating, and once I have that executed, I'm simply going to hit save. Now, this is now going to save my Power Automate. And again, I would go in and rename this action, but to save time in the video, we're going to keep it as is. How do we get this attached to the application? Well, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to head back over to my Power Apps. So again, this is called Send Park Details Email. So I go back over to Power Automate. There it is. <coughs> Send park and I'll come off screen here send park details email so once I select it watch what this does it's now gonna add this automate to my button up here at the top and now we can see it says all right you're gonna use your send park details email flow and then it says dot run so for the dot run here because in the automate one of our pieces to the action uh, for the git row, we said, hey, we're going to ask Power Apps for it, which means we now have to code this part to get it done. So how do we code this in? Well, I need to know the row ID column within this data source, which in my case is <clears throat> the inspection ID. How can I get the inspection ID in here? If you've been with me in the series, I think you already know because I'm in a gallery and I have a record selected, I'm going to say this item dot. So this item dot, which means, hey, for this record, what value do you want returned? Well, in our case, 
I need the inspection ID. That is my row identifier within this data table. So I'm going to choose inspection ID and then I'm going to close that off. And at this point, it's done. That's all I had to do. But let's see if this works. So I'm going to hit play here. And I'm going to choose this one. So this is March 27th. This is the inspector. This is what the rating was. I'm going to click the mail icon. And then within a few seconds, my email is going to light up. And we're then going to have that email show all of those values. So as we can see in just a second here, my email just lit up. I'm going to bring it on over. And it says, moment of truth, dear... Here was the inspector. Take a look at your inspection. Comments is edit inspection. This is the date. This is the rating. And it worked to a T. It worked picture perfect. Except you might say, Matt, you know what? I don't like the way that your date here is showing. Can you modify that? Well, you know what? Let's do it. Doesn't take too long to do. So I'm going to close out of this email. I'm going to go back into editing my flow. So I'm going to come up here and we already tested it. So I'm going to come back and we're going to edit this. So for the date, I'm going to get rid of inspection date. And this time I'm going to use an expression to format the date that I want it to be. So here's how we're going to get this accomplished. I'm going to choose expression and I'm going to use an expression called format date time. So format date time. And then once I have that, I'm going to use an open parentheses to make it active. And this says, all right, give me the timestamp that I'm going to do this formatting over. Well, my timestamp is that date column. So I'm going to return back to dynamic content and I'm going to bring in inspection date. And as you can see now, we're having a whole bunch of stuff. And this is the only thing about Power Automate that hopefully they'll start to uh, revamp this soon. But I'm going to have to scroll all the way over. This is what's returning. It's returning from my record, from that get row action, the inspection date. Then I'm going to put comma, and now I'm going to format it the way that I want. So I'm going to use single tick marks, and I'm going to do mm slash dd slash yyyy. Typically, anytime I use in, uh, expressions, because they're really hard to read here, I'll copy out the whole expression. I'm also going to hit OK to make sure it comes in here. You can see that looks a little bit different now that it's an expression. It has the FX in front of it. But then I'll also add any expressions I have, I'll add those into my notes section so that I can easily reference this down the road. So now I'm going to hit save. We're going to give it a second here. It has now been saved. Let's send that email one more time and see what it looks like this time. So when I hit send the email button, we'll give it a second here. It should pop up in my email. There it comes. And now take a notice my date is now formatted the way that I want it. So lots of different ways to format dates and times. Uh, so definitely feel free to take a look at that and make it to your liking. So technically we're done. We did a Power Automate, our first one within the application. But what I also said I wanted to do is show you how can you just send an email directly from here without setting up a Power Automate. So the way that this is accomplished is we need a new data source connection within this application. So if you remember, if you've been watching my videos, to set up new data connections or to bring data into your application, we're going to head over to our data hub. And then once here, I'm going to click on Add Data. And what I want to bring in is my Office 365 connection. So I'm going to bring in Office 365. And this one is going to be my Office 365 Outlook. So I'm going to select Office 365 Outlook, choose my connection, which is attached to me. We'll give this a second. It's now in here. So watch what I can now do with this. So I'm going to go back to my tree view. I'm going to add in another icon here, something that looks just a little bit different than the other one. We'll do something like um, we'll do a check mark here. Again, it doesn't matter what it is. You know what? Just to show you that you can, can do a button, I'm going to show it on a button here. So I'll do insert. Oop, got to make sure I'm in my template cell before I do this. So I get my whole template cell. I'm going to insert a button, come over here. I'm just going to simply double click and do uh, send email. And now watch what I can do. So on the send email, on the on select property, I'm going to choose my Office 365 Outlook connector. 
And what I want to do is for my Office 365 Outlook, I want to do a send email. So I'm going to do Office 365 send email, and that's on my on select property. And notice it's now giving me all the parameters. Who should it go to? Well, again, I'm going to hard code this in, but I'm going to show you how you can use your content within the gallery, but I'm just going to send it to myself for right now. So M. Peterson at pragmaticworks.com. I have to put it in double quotes because this is a string value, comma, what is the subject of this? And I'm now going to start to make this, I'm going to collapse this out so it's a little bit easier to read. So I've got my two. I'm now going to do my subject, uh, something like here is, here are the details, here are the details about your inspection. All right, ah, come on, spell now, there we go, comma, now for the body. Here's where we can start to bring in, I could have done this earlier, but let me show you how I can bring in stuff from this record. So I'm going to say um, the park inspection for, now what do I want to do? I want to bring in, let's say I want to bring in the park ID, okay, something very simple. I'm going to do an ampersand. And I'm going to go this item dot park ID. And so now it's going to say the park inspection for, then it'll bring in the park ID. Ampersand, I'll put has comments of, has comments of, I'll do a colon, a space, another close that off. I want to bring in the comments now, so another ampersand. And I'll just do this item dot comments. But you can see, you can start to code this out and put as much information as you want to, and it doesn't have to be only what you see in the gallery. As you saw, I'm bringing in the park ID, even though the park ID is not displayed here. So I'm gonna do another parentheses here to close this off. And I've got my body, I've got that in. Actually, I don't need the double quote at the end, so just a simple parentheses. So I'm now gonna hit play. I'm gonna hit send email. And in a second, my box should, my inbox should light up here again. Here we go. Bring it on over. And it says the park inspection for one. Okay, so I probably put a space after that has comments of. Uh, and then it brought in the, um, well, exactly what I wanted. Let me come back here. It brought in, if I go back to my send email step, it brought in my this item dot comments for it. Uh, and so it said the comments were actually edit comments. So pretty neat, that's how you can send emails directly from your application with a button without using Power Automate, or you can go over and use Power Automate. I typically go with the Power Automate idea uh, because we can even do some styling on those emails, make it look a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer. But hopefully this is something you can start using in your application. I have a lot more Power Automate videos on tap for you uh, coming up in this series. Uh, again, if you like this video, hit like. Uh, if you like our channel, make sure you hit subscribe. And uh, hopefully I will be seeing you in the next one.